Hi. Okay, this is another Hobby Came video. Um, someone was asking a little bit about how to put on the Hobby Came and not have it just look flat. Like, how do you get it to kind of go with the curves of your piece? So I just thought I would video um, putting the pieces onto one of my pet memorials. So I have my piece of Hobby Came. And I find the point I usually want to start in. Usually it's going to be in one of my inside corners or whatnot. Um, you know, somewhere that I want to hide my seam. And I go ahead and I get that attached. And then kind of what I do is a little bit of two things. I want it to go along and... Um, get into the curves of the piece, but I want to pay attention because if, let's say I'm doing something that I kind of want it to look like it has a perfect circle or, you know, kind of has a nice gentle curve, if my pieces weren't cut exactly how I needed them to, I might need to fudge it a little bit. Um, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. I use a piece of a bottom of a steak for a like dollar um, light that goes out in your yard like a solar light and I use my hands. Um, you can wear gloves definitely for this because by the time I'm done, I'm gonna be covered in lead. Um, usually I just kind of do this portion and then I go and wash up. Um, but you'll see what I, I've started doing is taking it around the piece. Um, when I'm taking it in general areas, I just am kind of smoothing it out with my hands, kind of like clay. Um, when I get to an area that maybe has a little bit more of a, a detail that I want to get or press in, um, that's when I kind of use my um, little plastic piece or a fid to kind of get that piece. But you want to be careful because you can really crease it. You can also mark it um, and, and, and damage it if you push too hard with something that is plastic, which is why I kind of generally say um, trying to keep it with my hands the best I can. And this is probably the best point to explain. Um, I know on the on the, one of the web pages, I don't know if it was mine or stained glass learners and addicts, they were asking, how do you get it around and not make it look like a snake? You know, if it kind of like this, you know, it's, it's circle. So I kind of have brought myself around on the track gently where I want it. And then all I'm gonna do, I'm hoping you can see this, is I'm just starting to work it from the top down with my hands. And I'm trying to get it in where I kind of want it. I don't go too far without really looking at it. So you can kind of see now I'm kind of getting that curve. And then if I want to bring it in a little bit tighter, I might use my plastic piece. And I don't go very far if I'm starting to have something like this. I'll get um, a couple of down and then I'll go ahead and I'll tack it. Because even if I go in and do a little more refining with my hands, I'm not really gonna need any more lead there and I don't want it to get too loose or or anything such as that. So as you see, I'm coming around. Hopefully you can see. Um, and I've also flipped mine both ways a little bit to make sure not only my track is staying even, but that I'm actually getting both sides. Um, and you can kind of see now how I've taken that curve in there. It doesn't look any more like a snake or straight down. So we're gonna come, start it the same way on the other side. Just kind of getting it where you want. And this really is me just making sure that my piece is not twisted, that um, the glass is in that channel track of the lead. And you'll see again, right now it's real smooth and this side's got the curve. And so I kind of get where I want to start. And I just gently like clay, kind of press it in with my hands. Sometimes I'll bend the piece. If it's a really tight or inside corner, I can do two things. I can kind of come in as an example here, and I'm just gonna fill in that little hole with lead, and I'm okay with that. If I really wanted it to be tight, I could actually cut the lead into that, like make a seam, and then start another piece, like you would do with normal leading um, when it's so thick that you can't get around a curve. Um, it's really gonna just depend on you and how much you practice this and do it. Um, and you'll see now, comparative, this side is also getting that edge. I've got it pretty much where I want it, maybe a little bit more fine tuning. And again, I'll come part way up 
um, wherever I'm going to solder it, though, I want to make sure that that piece is tight in how I want it. And then we'll come in and do another little solder joint. And I do apologize. I don't do a lot of videos. This is kind of still new to me. And when you're one person on your own, you can't always... It doesn't always look like you hope it will, I guess, is, is what it's getting at. So I'm going to come around my corner again, pressing in, kind of getting it where I want. You can kind of see the lead starting to get a hold over my hands. And as I get close to where I want to be, I kind of, you can be better than me and measure and all that, but I kind of bring my lead in where I pretty much think it's going to be. And I mark it with my putty knife or whatever your lead knife is. Um, you can have a, buy a lead knife. I've always used a putty knife because it's what I have in the house. I do sharpen my putty knife. I keep a sharp tip on it. Um, so I'm going to keep on working this in. It looks like I misjudged this one a little bit, but it's going to be okay because it's going to be up at that tip where I'm going to hide it with the... Uh, the lead anyway, but I'm going to come around this corner. I do apologize. I hope you can see it kind of pushing it because it's just like anything. As I push it, I'm going to stretch it and it's going to give me a little more at that end. Okay, so now I pretty much have it tacked on in a couple of places and it's not going to come off. So if from when you're watching me, you can see now that it actually curves right with the piece and comes around. And usually at this point is when I kind of look at both sides, start going around a little bit more and just making sure it's where I want it smooth and, and everything. And once it's all where I'd like it to be, then at this point, I'm going to come in, and you can see I've just kind of done a fast um, solder, not, not really good, just enough to kind of tack everything together. And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to, I want to be careful, I try to keep the flux off of the main part of that hobby cam. I try just to get this little edge, because I do want to tin this whole edge. This is what makes it look like I've um, gone around the whole edge and put in the the lead, kind of that illusion. But I just kind of come in with my flux, get all in here. Uh, I find I put a little more than I want, or if it's not running and going really well into the areas that I'm hoping to, you know, kind of capture, I do seem to use more flux in this area um, than I do on my normal piece. And then I just kind of start coming in and start filling in that edge. And I'll play around with it. If you can see up in here, I know it's kind of sunny today. So I don't know if you can see it or not. I've now, it looks like a nice fine solder joint in this section. Because all I'm going to do is go around and solder all that foil in and around the edge. So. This is what I'm going to do to finish up this piece. Make sure that everything's not twisted. You remember like I said, tighten it all up. Make sure I'm happy with it. Get all my points. Clean everything up. A couple things to remember. It is lead. So if you don't use lead too often, uh, I've seen on a couple of forums today. First piece or two I did, I did melt. You, you can't stay long in one area. Uh, the lead will melt at a certain point. Um, so you do want to keep on moving if you don't like an area or just didn't get enough or it's um, maybe wavy that you don't like, you can go back. You just need to let it cool down a little bit. I use a um, Heiko. I actually set at the 360, which is Celsius, the second 
one up. I used to run always at 410. I like it better because it moves your solder faster, but I've gotten so used to 360 that I just do everything at 360 now. Um, I find I have a little bit better control anyways. It's slower. Uh, so I do have to watch. I sometimes, if, I should say, you got to be careful because if you stay too long in an area, you'll crack it because you it takes you much longer to, to move everything. So a lot of times if I'm doing a bigger piece, I will move myself up, but not when I'm starting to work on this lead area. Because if I go up to the 410 or higher, it is going to melt through faster than I can get the work done. So hopefully that helps you to see how to put on the lead cane. Thanks.